Hello, my favorite losers. So this is going to be the second video explaining the work of Benoit Mandelbrot, which he applies um, fractals in financial uh, models. So basically, um, what is a fractal? Fractal are things that repeat themselves in a way that the biggest thing have the same form, the same format of the smallest thing. One example is like a tree. If you cut a tree, if you cut pieces of a tree, you see that the pieces of the tree have the same format of an entire tree themselves. And another thing, wind and many natural things. So this fractal and its mathematical uh, way to replicate is very widespread used in aero, aerospatial engineer. Um, and many things that are linked to the development of airplanes or rockets and this kind of things. And now, because of Menla money brought, it starts to get used in finance. So at the end of the series, we will replicate one of his models based on a paper. The paper is volatility for uh, volatility forecasting with bivariate fractal model. It's from 2019, and the authors are Liu, Demir. In good, and the idea is to improve the volatility of returns um, in indexes and also currencies. So, why are the, the the actual models, the models used today, widespread used today, are not that good? So, for two reasons: one, it's because of something called long memory, and the second thing, it's volatility clustering. Today I will explain about long memory. So what is a long memory? A long memory is a higher time autocorrelation um, compared to the implied autocorrelation in the model. So for example, we have the stationary gauge and the arch, the stationary arch and the gauge one one, and they assume that the autocorrelation decays exponentially. So, for example, let's write a Garch 1 1. So, this is the conditional uh, volatility in time t is equal to a constant plus alpha, which is a coefficient, times the error term raised to 2, um, t minus 1. This is like the unexplainable, uh, unexpected uh, return. And plus the, another coefficient and the volatility of the previous time. So we can see here in the gauge 1, 1. So why it's not good? In the way it, uh, it applies the autocorrelation, for each new time, uh, the autocorrelation will decay exponentially. So for example, this is the error of this is the ET, and we want to find for the next time, it's going to be E squared, which let's suppose that we have, uh, this is the, the correlation of, the, of uh, the autocorrelation, this is the time, time key, it will be equal, for example, alpha and raised to k. So if alpha is, for example, 0 0.8 and k is uh, 20, so it would be in time 20, the, previous, the autocorrelation will reach to 0 0.01. Uh, 5, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, yes, which is too, it's too low, you know, it decays too fast. And what's what is observed in, for example, for the volatility of currencies in developing markets and in many other financial, um, financial uh, things are observed to have a long memory. Some papers, they actually say that the long memory is not an exception, but it's, that's the rule. So why would you use a Garch? Which, by the way, the Garch, the guy who made Garch, got a premium Nobel for that. And it's not that good. It's, it sucks. It's, no, it doesn't suck, but it just it, it will only work if we assume that the autocorrelation decays exponentially. And then what they came, they came up with something called integrated Arch and Garch. In, in the integrated arch and gauge, it's even worse because in those cases the autocorrelation is equal one uh, for all the all the 
for all the all the times. So we just we just smooth using the coefficient, and that's not correct. That's not correct. The correlation is not even perfect correlated, and it's not even exponentially decaying. So the multifractal model will solve this problem by finding a middle term between the stationary arch in the gauge and the integrated arch in gauge. And in the, in the next um, video, I'll explain a little bit more about the clustering, the volatility clustering. And after that, in the other one, I'll explain the, the model itself, volatility of the multifractal by, by, by very multifractal model. And then in, in the last of the last video, for those who like coding, I will create a function, I'll create a library because it doesn't exist for applying bivariate multifractal models and apply in one of the currencies in South America or Russia, you know. And let's see if we can beat Garch. So thank you very much for watching. I don't expect many people to watch because that's too smart. <laughs> Joking. And thank you very much. Be safe.